Hey everyone, this is Paul Gale from paulgalenetwork.com and thank you for joining me today as we watch this Pokemon Presents Together. It is August 3rd, 2022 and I am stoked. Let's go. Hello everyone, I'm Utsunomiya from the Pokemon Company. In today's Pokemon Presents, we will be sharing information on several of our games including the Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet games. But before that, I'm happy to share some news about the Pokemon World Championships that will be held in cool. London, UK this year from August 18th to August 21st. Please have a look at this video. Pokemon Company is Hello, doing Pokemon stuff. Pokemon Trainers. All I'm Chris Brown from the Pokemon wow. Company International. And I'm delighted to share with I think you it's great. updates on our annual Pokemon World Championships. After three years, our global community will come together August 18th to 21st in London for not only intense Pokemon battles, but also to be together, celebrating old friendships and creating new ones, all in the spirit of friendly competition. We are expecting thousands of players from around the world to compete in this year's trading card game, video game, and Pokemon tournament deluxe events. Many players had long journeys How earning their Pokemon invitation tournament over several two? years, and we are thrilled to learn who will earn the title of World Champion in 2022. This year, we are also adding many new elements to the show, beginning with two new Pokemon titles. Please join me in welcoming Pokemon Go, where nearly 100 players will compete across two age divisions, and Pokemon Unite, where 16 teams from 11 regions will compete. These players have battled all year for their shot to earn the title of the very first world champion in these new categories. We also have a few surprises in store for fans attending in person, including our largest ever Pokemon Center World's pop-up shop. For those it's unable to attend in person, you can follow all the action first from wherever world you are on our dedicated live streams Unite for each product, of including Go. coverage of every championship match for each age division. Pokemon tournaments are held around the world and we hope the competition at the World Championships inspire many new players to make new friends through battle. And one more thing, it's my honor to unveil for fans today our new Pokemon World Championships Pikachu Trophy. Take a look. Add. Add. Skip ad. That's fun. That's cute. <laughs> Thank you. We look cool. forward to seeing you in London. And now I would like to hand it back to Mr. Utsu Nomiya. Thank you very much, Mr. Brown. With the Pokemon World Championships returning after three years, please look forward to exciting battles to keep you on the edge of your seats. Now, I'd like to share some news about a few of our games. For the first time in three years, we held in-person Pokemon Go Fest events in Berlin and Seattle. And this weekend, we will be holding an event in Sapporo, Japan. Pokemon Go continues to be really strong. At each event. I think somewhere around 70 million during the Pokemon Go Fest 2022 the finale user event base that will be held on August monthly. 27. The finale is a global event that can be enjoyed by trainers wherever they are so in the world. Trainers will be able month. to encounter Pokemon they may not normally that see in the wild. Fluctuate. They can also encounter the mythical the Pokemon I don't know if it hits the 80s anymore, research. I don't think so. Will but you be able to 50, help right? re-contend like, with the Ultra Beasts? Far. And what has become of Lower. Professor Willow, who was sucked into Ultra Space through an Ultra Wormhole? Person. Stay tuned for the story's conclusion. Whatever we get today is going to be fun. You know, it's been a summer where ever since June 1st, it's, it's a special been incense that can be used event once after a day event, and lasts drop after for 15 drop. minutes. It can attract from Pokemon all companies, not normally but seen in, your area. in particular, and the Pokemon company to get things off with Scarlet and Violet, Use daily adventure revealing the beast, the legendary every day. Over the past six years, we've seen Pokemon from Mario every Kart region debut Deluxe. in Pokemon Go. There are now New over 700 Pokemon you can register to the Pokedex. Whether Nintendo you're making new friends showcase. at Pokemon Go Fest or having heated battles at the Pokemon World Championships, the entire world is Banda, the stage for Pokemon Go, 
and our adventures are just getting started. Cool. Sonic Frontier is on the you know, other side. Like, there's just been a lot Pokemon going on. Pokemon Unite, the hot app for Nintendo Switch and mobile devices. Pokemon Unite has continued to grow and evolve since its release one Plus year ago. Plus actual games, In you celebration know? of its first anniversary, we're adding not only new Pokemon Mark adventures Strikers, to the game, but also many Zeta events Chronicles and campaigns. 3, which just came out. That's fantastic, by the way. Fire Emblem Warriors new type 3 Hopes, of quick battle, Pika Nintendo Party, Switch will Online, today, N64, August Sega Genesis, NES, SNES games. In this special type of quick battle good in celebration of our first anniversary, two plus months. all Pokemon on the field, both we're at wild August 3rd and right players, now, so are Pikachu. Uh, we hope you we still join have in a the few weeks left. Well, technically through September, but most people think of summer as will June, be July, the August. Battles starting today, in reality, August 3rd. it's not. Buzzwool is an all-rounder that can like grapple June opposing Pokemon and launch them into September the air. 21st, you know. Run amok in battle with Buzzwool's ability. And that's why Ace Splatoon boost, 3 is a summer game. Increases Even though the 9th is usually when time and knocks out an opposing know, Pokemon. people are back in school. This first anniversary is just the start of what's to come in Pokemon Unite. We're planning more events for September as well, so please stay tuned. And we're gifting you night licenses in Hollowware for Pikachu, Lucario, Blastoise, Snorlax, and Sylveon in celebration I wonder of the what first we'll anniversary. See. Oh, some cool costumes. I like that Blastoise. <laughs> I wonder what we'll see today. You know, like we've already seen a little something, some updates. It's cool. Is that red off the top of the mountain or ash? <laughs> awesome. Pokemon Masters EX 3 year anniversary. Okay, cool. Hey. Mm hmm. Oh, that makes sense. What's this? Looks like Mewtwo's back in the Pokemon <laughs> Cafe Remix game, and it's hungry. Make delicious drinks and dishes with your cafe staff to treat Mewtwo to a wonderful time. So we're Once less you than make a lot of delicious drinks and dishes in one minute cooking video. to fill Mewtwo up, Nothing and get to your staff. Nothing major so far, but you know the Pokemon company, like I said earlier, it's so big, it's doing things all year Here round. Here are some hints on how it to play the game, one minute cooking puzzle games, mode mobile to division, satisfy Mewtwo. Pokemon Go, of course. Dip one. New gather big titles on Nintendo Switch, Mewtwo cards, likes to order anime, small plates. movie, so gather staff that specialize in small plates. Pikachu, kind of like Nintendo did with Chef the Mighty Mutini, Bowser and showing and that as a thing. Now the Pokemon company could announce a team up with if you want to aim for the some high other score, reputable brand and Go to the Pokemon release a new figure, a new clothing line, a new level by training partnership Once with a great staff is up to the challenge, it's time retail to begin outlet or a restaurant cooking. chain, something on like that. The second tip. Just and that could be on mixing, that could be cool. As much as you can. Once Not you all begin fans of keep the core game the care about everything else combos. necessarily, but there are so Use many fans that someone will care about something. And you should something. be able to satisfy Mewtwo. We that's hope one of the reasons why Pokemon has and there's uh, more. Done such a good job thriving in the last today, almost Latios three decades. Will also appear in the future. Wait, there's even more! We have a special campaign underway starting today. This is your chance to get Victini and Latios on your staff. Pokemon Cafe Remix is available at no I'm cost to start to and is playable and on Violet Nintendo Switch today. systems and mobile devices. Give me another new trailer. Here we go. Next up, an update on the Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet games. Farewell, expensive fitness gear. I can't afford you. Commercial. Pick up the things you love. Yeah, State Farm has rates that. Okay, cool. Let's go.
Attention, please. Today we begin cool. the treasure hunt. What is that thing? Travel across Paldea. Ah, <laughs> nice. Ah, <laughs> nice. Get to know the region. <laughs> That's cool. Wow. Nice. The abundant nature. Wow. The rich culture. Pokemon lends itself so well to being an open world game. The Pokemon. And the people. Where I'm, will you go? I'm glad they're having voice acting in the trailer during this portion. Who will you meet? But more importantly, what will you achieve? hopefully there's voice acting in the game. Even in small quantities, it's gonna help. Modernize. With it. you will be your Pokemon. Journey together. Learn together. Play together. Find something to treasure. Dang, November 18. These games are going to do very well. Wow. 15 million dollars easily. These crystal forms are looking cool. I'm looking forward to the four player online co op. That's going to be fun. Treasure hunt begin. Awesome. We're now starting to get a clearer picture of your adventures to come in the Paldea region. I'd like to dive a little deeper into the information presented, so let's take a closer look together, shall we? The newest titles in the Pokemon series are the Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet games. These titles will be open-world RPGs, a first for the Pokémon series. Sprawling landscapes and vibrant towns weave together to form the Paldea region, where your new adventure will unfold. These are the legendary Pokémon, Coridon and Miraidon. You'll rely on one of them as a partner in your adventure. Climb on! And together, you'll dash across grassy fields. That's pretty neat. <laughs> move across water and glide through the sky. Your partner can change forms as needed while you explore every nook and huh. cranny of the region with them. That's fun. You will be enrolling at a certain academy as a student. And a special independent study project awaits you. The treasure hunt. Through it, you'll embark on a journey to find treasure of your own here in Paldea. Three grand stories are waiting for you. One story will revolve around the familiar gym battles. You'll go to eight Pokemon gyms and aim for the champion rank. In these games, there is no set path you must take when challenging the gyms. Chart your very own course along Victory Road. I wonder if Jim. The other two stories you'll experience hold many surprises and discoveries as well. Which story will you begin with? How will you progress through them? Or it is all based. up to you. Is that how they are in difficulty? From where you start off your adventure to you know the furthest point in the map. Professor Sada and Professor Churro. Research legends passed on in the Paldea region. Mr. Clavel is the director of the academy you'll attend. And Mr. Jacques is your homeroom teacher who teaches biology. You'll have your battle loving friend, Nimona. And you'll meet Arvin, an upperclassman and a great cook. There's also Penny, 
a shy student in your grade. There are gym leaders too, like Grusha, the ice type gym leader. The people you meet in Paldea are sure to enrich your adventures. Many different species of Pokemon also call the Paldea region home. This Pokemon is the Paldean regional form of Wooper. It lives on the land and covers its body with a poisonous film. Fido mm. are delightfully squishy Pokemon <laughs> that are smooth to the touch. And here's Satitan, which has a large body and a hard horn that can freeze its surroundings. Of course, we also have the Pokemon from which you'll choose your first partner. I like this dog. Sprigatito, Fuecoco, <laughs> and Quaxly. Fuecoco. Enjoy Quaxley. meeting lots of Pokemon. It's a fun word. And complete your Pokedex as part of your adventure. By using the Union Circle, you can enjoy co-op play with up to three friends. You can go look for Pokemon you haven't yet discovered. Or even ride together to race across the map. Enjoy all the Paldea region has to offer with family and friends. No thanks. No ad. The terrestrial phenomenon makes Pokemon shine like gems. That's pretty neat. All Pokemon in the Paldea region are able to terrestrialize, which can provide a boost to a Pokemon's type and make its moves stronger. Pretty. Some Pokemon will change type Ooh. when they terrestrialize. Nice. What type they become seems to depend on that Pokemon's Terra type. Interesting. For example, an Eevee would typically remain normal type after terrestrializing. Yeah. But there could be Eevee that become grass or water type after terrestrializing. Cool. We hope you'll try to catch Pokemon with rare Terra types. Pokemon that have rare Terra types are more likely to appear in Terra raid battles. You can challenge Terra Pokemon in these battles with up to three other trainers. This is a new kind of raid battle where you can attack or heal with your own timing without having to wait for your allies. Try to cooperate with your allies to get the upper hand in these battles. After you successfully defeat a Terra Pokemon, you'll get the opportunity to catch it for yourself. It's gonna make for some nice cards too. And the enemies We've can kept enjoy all the things you love about Pokemon while evolving the adventure you can have in Pokemon Scarlet and Probably Pokemon Violet. Probably a good Violet. line of toys coming out, real crystal figures. We hope like you look forward to the day Nintendo you set out on your company. adventure. Probably team up with a glass maker. The Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet games are available to pre-order at We're gonna have one more thing. retailers now. Your independent study in the Paldea region begins in three months. Yeah. We eagerly await your enrollment. That's all for today's presentation. Okay. Thank you very much for tuning in and watching. Not a one more thing. That's all right. Okay. That was still fun. Pokemon Go, Pokemon Cafe, Pokemon Unite, some information on... The Pokemon World Championships and stuff Pokemon like that. Pokemon Violet games are available to but pre at particip I think the main thing for me that was cool was this. The new trailer, the new footage shown, the details that we got expanded on Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet.
the games look good. Pokemon Legends Arceus, which came out earlier this year, was such a fun title. It was a real blast, you know. And like I said earlier, the whole year really has been this solid uh, seven months plus so far of just hit release after release and announcement after announcement. It's been fun. It's never been a dull moment, really. If you only like one thing, then maybe you didn't get what you wanted. But if you like video games at large or you know, even within that category of video games as a hobby, Nintendo at large, not just one IP based, not just one IP driven in what you want, then you probably had a good time playing and watching these things come out, you know. Uh, and it's going to just continue. August, September, October, we're getting some titles that are pretty big and there's always that rumored Metroid Prime 20th anniversary re, 20th anniversary remake that comes out November or December potentially, and that would be a really nice way to cap off the year. But even if that doesn't happen, these two games are definitely going to deliver, and it looks like they're just building up on what they achieved with Pokemon Legends Arceus. A smooth running game, good graphics in a big world with you know, a fully functional 3D self-rotating camera. Hopefully no hiccups, a lot of action going on in the screen at once. And this time around, you know, having that four-player multiplayer. Pokemon Company has taken a while, Game Freak's taken a while to kind of get with the times when it comes to going to 3D, going to online, going to online co-op, and going to open world. And it's not like you have to follow every trend, but there are certain things that are just kind of acceptable or highly liked, almost assumed in the video game industry by people. You know, and some of those things include stuff like voice acting, cinema scenes, you know, some type of online functionality. And that's not to say that every game is going to need it. You know, Tetris 99, you're playing it, it doesn't need to have a cinema scene or a voice acting in in it right but there are certain games that based off their genre based off of what else is in the field you know you kind of want this maturity and sometimes you could get by with it just fine if you have really good gameplay design and a fun story and that's kind of why Pokemon I think has been where it has been for a while without necessarily always hitting that okay systems are capable of HD we've got to make it HD we've got to make it big and bold and stuff. They kind of do what they want and succeed and it's a big business but I am happy to see that they are evolving in the technical aspects and in some of the modern you know gameplay conventions that we're used to now such as you know online cooperative play. Back in the day when Pokemon first came out and we were playing on Game Boy simultaneously watching Pokemon the anime on TV. I thought because Nintendo 64 was the console at the time, ah, oh, it'd be really cool to play an open world before the term open world became, you know, popular just an open world Ocarina of Time like game of Pokemon, but in big chunks, big sections where we're getting to play as Ash, Misty and Brock going through that environment. Not necessarily online, that wasn't my Thought, but when we got to Nintendo GameCube, that's when I did think, okay, four people online at once playing, because the Nintendo GameCube was an online capable machine, it just happened to not have too much. But it did have something like Fantasy Star Online Episode 1 and 2 that you could play online together. So really it was then that I went from, okay, being able to run around with a small crew of characters in the Nintendo 64 era, which we didn't get Pokemon wise to, okay, Pokemon XD Paul Gale of Darkness, for instance, being a 3D, not open world, but a 3D open terrain navigating adventure game on the Nintendo GameCube, but four players looking like the anime, especially when we saw the Wind Waker come out. How cool would it be to walk around in? an anime look in place and have four people play at once and kind of go through a story. I always wanted to go through a story where 
you know, Team Rocket's coming in and we're getting voice acting as they're interfering with us. And it's kind of funny because these are some of the thoughts that I've had around 20 years ago. And some of those still aren't here in main Pokemon games like voice acting. And of course, we've always had, you know, Team Rocket or, you know, opposing forces interrupt uh, our mission, but just more of a dynamic approach to it, more of a cinematic approach, kind of like in the anime. But, you know, regardless of whether it's going to get to my vision, it's neat to see that uh, it is evolving at a different rate, too. And, you know, you could say that for a company that is making so much, they could put in more resources or hire more talent to make the game bigger in terms of, you know, visuals and that kind of scope. But really, nobody else aside from, you know, Nintendo and the Pokemon company along with, you know, Game Freak and all parties involved in that cluster has achieved something like Pokemon. Make a game with a few hundred different types of characters with different animations for them with thousands of different total moves and scenarios and make the game so that it doesn't break so that there is no one overwhelmingly powerful character that nothing else stands a chance that you do have this concept of team battles that you do have a team of four five six and come up with new gameplay elements whether it's gigamax or this terraforming that are fun and keep it fresh and new worlds new environments yet somehow still cohesive uh, that's easier said than done otherwise plenty of companies would have their own world and their own high quality pokemon ripoff not just an adventure game but this adventure game with hundreds of characters and at this point, by the time Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet are going to come out, there will be around a thousand Pokemon. And, you know, I don't think it's particularly fair or wise to say, well, it doesn't have all 1,000 in, in it. No game, whether it's a fighting game or a first-person shooter, has all of its traits, all of its characters, all of its stages, maps, racetracks, etc. from every previous version. Pokemon is a much bigger thing than just gotta catch them all and all of them are in it and expanding the Pokedex and you know having this game with 1,000 characters in it. That would be cool. You could say that what if Game Freak, Pokemon Company, Nintendo worked in such a way where okay Nintendo's monolith soft team the folks responsible for the recent hit xenoblade chronicles 3 took the helm and made the next mainline pokemon gen 9 titles how would that turn out big cinema scenes lots of voice acting keeping it faithful following you know what pokemon company has been known for and would like to do and like to continue achieving that would be cool. Could it be done in a timely manner? You know, for as much as the 39-year-old me likes Pokemon, and I'm in a little bit different of a situation because I have a 7-year-old son and a 5-year-old daughter in which they're into Pokemon as well, and they will buy, or I will buy for them, the additional merchandise, whether it's the cars, the clothing, you know, team up with a uh, different brand for something unique and being a big kid myself I'll buy this kind of stuff too once in a while you know in addition to the games but kind of like other popular IP out there like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Pokemon isn't necessarily made for just the 39 year old that grew up in 1996 as a 13 year old no, it's made for the new 13-year-olds, you know? It's made for everyone, really. It's not just made for or targeted to one audience, especially not the audience that is 
the pioneering one. And that's because our most other people out there in their 30s and 40s that grew up playing Pokemon as a kid going to, in addition to, play the new games that come out once every three years or so, once every four years, the mainline games, are they going to be buying the toys alongside, watching the anime alongside, buying the movies, buying the cards, you know, going to you know, McDonald's, Burger King's, whatever, and getting the Happy Meals? Well, sometimes they do for uh, collector's purposes, but by and large, no. Kids grow up and grow out, and you kids grow up and grow into something. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, there's a reason why the old 1980s property, that cartoon, hasn't been running on for 30 years. The show gets rebooted once every several years because there's a new group of 5, 10 year olds, whatever, that are watching it and buying the toys alongside it, buying the clothes alongside it, buying the toothbrushes, etc. Even if you have the, you know, 35 to 45 year old fans of Ninja Turtles, they're going to watch the cartoon because it's free or less, hop in easy, but they're not going to help propel the franchise and to continue it forward and to have it expand, grow, flourish, make the parent company's money. No, you got to market it to who you originally marketed it to, to, that age group. So video games of this nature are a similar way. You know, it's a different story if you released a mature title that was catered to adults from the very beginning, like Bayonetta. Bayonetta was a mature rated game, so it's for 18-year-old plus audience. At that point in life, they're trying to sell you a game. When Bayonetta 2 comes out, once again, they're trying to sell an adult game to adults. Bayonetta 3, they're trying to sell adult game to adults. So it doesn't matter if you're 18, 28, 38, 49, 59, and so forth. You're going to play that adult rated, mature rated game of Bayonetta and its sequels, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. And that's what they want you to do. That's what they're getting at. That's their business model. Pokemon is more than just a game. It's giant. There's a lot to do. Now you could say, what about this? How could you possibly achieve this continuation, this flow of every three years or so? Because it's tried and true and it's showing that this is the time to introduce it. Because with the games, come a new anime, come new toys, come a new age group, have this section of cards doing well and then new people coming in and out and some people continuing and building upon it. It's not like everyone just drops off when they're 16, ah, I'm not going to play anymore, I'm not going to watch anymore, no. But there is that peak audience and they want to always keep that peak audience. Is there a way to achieve this steady flow but also deliver a little bit more visual bang, a little more performance bang in these games? by having a longer development cycle. And I think that you could. The mainline games could benefit from you know, some other developer help, like one of Nintendo's teams, or you know, Capcom perhaps, they did wonders with uh, Monster Hunter Rise for instance, and release a bigger title. But would you still have all of those characters? Let's say you do. And let's say this game doesn't take, you know, two and a half years, three years to develop in order to come out once every three years. It's like a five-year process. Now you're messing with the timeline of sticking to that, you know, tried and true formula. But you could have something else that's big, something that's an interim title in between that's kind of like a, an expansion on the previous generation entry you know, kind of like a crystal, right? Uh, kind of like an emerald, where you have this game that a smaller team could introduce some more characters to. That way, as this audience is starting to get older, instead of having that new one come out, 
you release that. Meanwhile, the bigger team behind the scenes is working on a bigger, higher end budgeted uh, next generation. Or you keep Pokemon the way it is. You obviously allow the Pokemon company, Game Freak, to make the games as they are. Slowly catching up with the times in some ways and then pioneering in others. They're doing a good job after all, right? Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield are really good games and are the best selling in the franchise since the originals, which is awesome. But you have the different projects like Pokemon Legends Arceus 2, which isn't reliant on the anime, isn't reliant on this every three year cycle, isn't necessarily tied to cards. You allow that game, that sequel, to really have a deep development cycle. Release it when it's taken advantage of the characters that you love to put in, the proper quantity, the bigger, more ambitious scope when it comes to things like voice acting and cinema scenes and stuff like that and online multiplayer play. And whether it's Game Freak doing it internally, if they could handle making you know, the next generation of Pokemon game look like this and the next Arceus game look like this, or allowing someone else to handle these other projects. And you've seen, you know, Nintendo and the Pokemon company do this before. Like we got, you know, new Pokemon Snap, for instance, in February of uh, 2021. Uh, that wasn't the same people that make Scarlet and Violet, you know? Uh, we have Pokemon Tournament, different group, different company, not making it. So if you want to hire Bandai Namco, but give them not just a fighting game, not just a you know photo game, but give them a big adventure title, something that's not necessarily necessarily a generation game, which is what a lot of people want, but you know an Arceus, uh, that might be the best approach because it could be a lot to take on, and maybe the quality would be sacrificed if Pokemon Company was developing you know, a next generation to follow these conventions, and then really putting a lot of resources into this other title that's five, six years in development. Maybe it can't be done that easily, and I'm sure it can't. Possible. They're wealthy enough to hire enough to make it possible, but they're also doing a lot. You see how big Pokemon is. It's global and in tournaments and in everything. Although you could always go back and forth and say, well, clearly that means they have enough to do it. That's a lot of new positions to fill. That's a lot of new jobs to have. I'm sure a lot of people would love to work on it, but that's quite a big undertaking. Maybe you have a different Pokemon game come out once every several years. That's a different line that's just like, wow, all the bells and whistles in it. And maybe it has you know, fewer characters as a result, but it's just a more ambitious, more epic looking with the times type of game. Uh, we'll see, we'll see. It's fun to talk, it's fun to speculate. Overall, I'm happy with the Pokemon Company. Uh, you know, prior to becoming a dad, I was still a fan of the games and of the franchise at whole. And, you know, being a dad for the last several years, it's just that much more fun. And all of these things are being looked at at once. It's trying to satisfy many. Be profitable, succeed. You don't want this thing to just be popular for 10, 15, 20 years and end, you know, for the next 70 years, probably past my timeline, you know, 100 years from now. You want this model to continue. I know that's difficult to look that far into the future. Video games haven't even been around for 70 years, and here we're talking sequels lasting. But for the powerful franchises that have existed for 30 years, like Donkey Kong, Zelda, and Mario, and different IP that have been around for 80 plus years, like Superman, Batman, there's a reason why they exist. Sometimes it's not reinventing the wheel. Sometimes it's sticking to the tried and true. It's good to be a pioneer. It's also good to know what you're good at. There's a fine line between you know, branching out and sticking to what you know, being the first to do something, but also not 
falling behind times when everything else is successful. You don't want to be the last necessarily to adopt a technology and be stubborn on it. You also don't want to sacrifice your vision, but kind of like life, you should be willing to be who you are, have that identity, and allow others to help mold you into being something bigger and better. And with video games and with art, you know, sometimes that's the case too. So I think overall, the Pokemon company is doing a great job. It might not be do everything that everyone wants, but you're never going to have one game, one company, one product satisfy everybody's needs, especially as a fan base gets bigger. You know, you're not going to have all 39 year olds like me like everything in this um, presentation today, this 19 minute video is it going to satisfy all 39 year olds or all 29 year olds or all 19 year olds you know but some of it will satisfy each chunk a portion of each chunk you know the youth that are playing the people in their 40s and so forth older uh, yeah I know this video ended up being double the length because we went from a watch along which thank you for watching if you happen to view the 20 minute presents presentation with me to kind of more of a talking segment but that was fun it's good it's good to kind of uh, express some of these ideas that I have on um, the Pokemon company how I feel they're doing kind of the reasons of why and maybe add some different perspective if you happen to be watching and maybe didn't think of that before. But yeah. All right. This is Paul Gale from paulgalenetwork.com signing out. Thanks again for joining me this August 3rd early morning. Have a good one and I'll see you all next time. Take it easy. Bye.